I wanted to cover my evolution of two-stroke um, learning. Um, because I think we, you know, we got into the piston thing, which was way ahead. So I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, you know, my love of two strokes came came around from, you know, as a little kid. You know, I had my first real motorcycle was a YZ80, and well, I mean, I had a, a mini bike, and then YZ80. So I just have always loved two strokes, and um, you know, as you can see, the Bull Taco and the Land Speed bike. But I've also got, you know, the I don't know four or five other RDs. They're all yellow. That's my love of early Yamaha stuff and that original, you know, Ken, Kenny Roberts and, and evolving into, you know, you know, Wayne Rainey and, and Eddie Lawson and, um, you know, all of the, the, the GP greats and, and frankly, the best time of GP racing. I, I still like modern MotoGP, but it's, it wasn't, it's not as cool to me and never will be as, as, as that, that time you know Kevin Schwantz on his Suzuki and and I, I just I just loved uh, the unmanageable difficulty of all of that making machine and rider was a, a difficult enough transition but making uh, a, 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 that bikes handle and unmanageable horsepower it's just a beautiful thing and and if you disagree with me you're wrong. So, I bought, originally I bought the land speed bike from Ed Erlenbach, which was, we got an airplane going over. Uh, which was the fastest RD400 in the world. It had a record at uh, El Mirage or Muroc, I can't remember, I think it was El Mirage, with all of the bodywork and fairing at 165 out of this air-cooled 424cc engine. Uh, which was world cl class power and, and insanely fast at the time. Ed, uh, I bought that 15 years ago, and Ed and I are still good friends. Um, I'll see him next weekend racing. Um, he runs an RD250 now, super fast. It's, it runs 143, I think is what his record is. So very fast, very helpful, and super smart guy. But anyway, I, so I bought this, and it was all kind of magic at the time. I mean, I had played with modifying the RD engine, but never on this level of, of modifications and this level of horsepower. You know, I mean, I think like everybody, I was doing, you know, cleaning up of porting and doing some uh, 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 port... Um, uh, timing changes and, and very minor things that kept me in a realm of not going too crazy. So when I first started playing with this thing, and so I bought the complete bike ready to go, and this was all kind of magic. I mean, so it was it was just insane amount of power. So of course, I went out and ran at Bonneville. Um, now the difference between El Mirage and Bonneville, El Mirage is a mile and a third and you accelerate, you're banging through the gears, and at the end of that mile and a third, you're timed. Where Bonneville, you have all the time in the world to get up to speed, you break a light, and you go wide open throttle top gear for a full mile. Now, it seems like, oh, that's not that big a deal, but where else in motorsports do you do that? You don't, and it's insanely difficult. Keeping an engine together at whatever, you know, this thing runs at 12,000 RPM, for that distance, that hard, it, you can't get rid of the heat on a, a high-strung two-stroke. Um, even the four-strokes, it's just it's difficult to control heat, difficult to control all of moving parts and keeping them all together. Land speed racing is not the cakewalk that that maybe some people think. It's 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 very difficult. But anyway, so I ran the air-cooled engine for years, maybe seven years before I finally went to the the liquid-cooled, but. The air cooled, and at one point I had, uh, I built a tank in the tail section and with a pump, and I was running atomized, you know, patio sprayers like they do in vintage airplane stuff, um, trying to keep it cool, and it almost worked, and it was it was somewhat effective, uh, but in 2012, I uh, decided that it was just uh, I needed to take the next step, and I applied my machining skills into doing the next thing, which was what this the this liquid cooled cylinder. So I went with a monoblock. Um, 
uh, and, you know, and of course, you, any of you RD fans know that the 102 millimeter boiler spacing is horrible. I mean, it makes for terrible transfer ports. I mean, ideally, we want transfer ports are nice, you know, teacup handled transfer ports. This goes up and in, and it's just, it's there's just no way around it. It's just horrible. And since we've got to make bore spacing this, we're limited by what the inner ports are doing to make the outer ports the same way. People have tried making bigger outer ports, but I think all it does is it confuses that column of air that you're trying to control and, and what works. So the, the really, the inside dimensions dictate what the outside dimensions do. So when I decided to make the, the liquid-cooled cylinder, which you can find, this is all documented on uh, Two Stroke Worlds forum, and this thread that I have, this whole, all this information is my Land Speed RD400 project. It's stickied on the uh, uh, turning wrenches section of that forum, but this goes through the entire uh, build process of, of doing this. You can see the that that's the tank that I used. Um, so this was later on in running the, the, the air-cooled engine. So anyway, so I built this. This is, um, you know, bathtub style, old school TZ um, way of cooling the, the top end of this, which is really dated and doesn't work anymore. And my evolution, here's the next evolution, which of course you can see all works much better. But, you know, this worked really well, went out um, in 2013, and I built this over the summer, or the winter of 2012 into the spring of 2013, and it's a complete build, so I couldn't get what I wanted, so I ended up building crankshaft connecting rods, the whole nine yards. Now, I knew the original air-cooled engine, which was originally built by Ed Erlenbach and Tom Turner. This is, you know, signed by Tom Turner, so I'm not sure, uh, what those guys shared, obviously Tom Turner from TSR Software um, has huge amounts of knowledge and those guys who I think are still very good friends um, um, did this originally. Now what I did is since I knew this made great power is I duplicated as close as I could. Of course I went with a bigger bore so I was able to utilize um, my displacement uh, where this is a cast in sleeve and, and 424 cc's was all you could get out of that. I went to a bigger bore and was able to run to 495 to utilize that. But if you look at the ports, I tried to duplicate that. The, all the timing is as close as I could get and the, the roof angles and the hook uh, contours because I knew this made good power and I didn't want to deviate uh, too much into the unknown. Now it's really difficult to start getting, uh, applying, uh, you know, Aprilia knowledge into to stuff and going too far. I try when I design stuff to keep into a realm of safety and I experiment in little areas or little in areas that I can reverse and always go back. Uh, the other problem with, with racing at Bonneville is you only have a very short amount of time to get everything right. We don't run every weekend, so it's not like I can make a great leap and then find out it doesn't work and come back and then race again the next weekend. You work all year long and then you have a weak segment to have everything work right. And everything never works right. I mean, it's just racing, you know? I mean, if you can get all this stuff right, you're going to break a you know, lose a wheel bearing or some other silly thing that, that, that ruins your, your year's worth of work. So I try to keep everything as close and, um, and as safe as possible while still trying to progress and evolve. So this takes years and years uh, of, of uh, evolution to, to, to make very significant leaps, which now over the past, what, five years I've made some significant changes. Um, so anyway, I built this this cylinder, well, the entire engine. Uh, Ed Erlenbach helped me design the pipes. We used TSR software to, to do that. Um, so I made the pipes out of uh, uh, stainless just because the steel rusts so quickly uh, out on the salt. 
it's all a consideration. I mean, everything has to be stainless and, and whatever. The salt is so insanely corrosive. Um, and I think that pretty much covers that. You can see the original uh, 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 reed box of, is a welded on piece. And I mean, this is, this is about as state of the art at the time as was available. And you can see it's single exhaust like the original. All of the stuff, this one obviously has been scored some, but this worked really well. Um, and I was very happy with all that. I will make another video um, on the next evolution because uh, I'm on the engine that's in the bike is number three. Um, so I will show you what I learned in engine number two, which is aluminum liners, uh, nicosilled, uh, triple port exhaust, and that was a, a great, good running engine too. But anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.